What would you do if you want to search for an image like this somewhere on your computer, but you don't consistently use keywords because they're a huge hassle and maybe you have hundreds of thousands of images in your Lightroom catalog, or perhaps you work with multiple Lightroom catalogs and you want to search all of them, or maybe you have content outside of Lightroom because that's not the only software you use. How great would it be if you could use artificial intelligence to just search on the phrase flowers and fog and search for that content anywhere in your computer without ever having to worry about keywords? Well, that is exactly the promise of a piece of software called Peak2. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go in the search bar here. I'm gonna search on content, meaning the visual content. Look for flowers in fog. And you can see it's found 522 photos or videos matching those search terms. I mean, this is impressive. Look at those search results. I'm gonna just kind of open this up a little more here. I mean, if we look at this, it's done a fantastic job of finding exactly the right content. And none of this has keywords. I look at a specific image. If I click on this, I can inspect the content of this image. If I go to the top right, Inspector, and then in the General tab, I can see under Keywords, there are no keywords. I did not add flower or fog to this image. It's not the name of the file. It is literally using artificial intelligence to look for things that match this visually like a human one. It's looking at the actual pixels to find the match. And I think that is so impressive. And then in the results here, it's sorted right now by relevance, meaning show the best matches to the search term up top. But I could search this in different ways. So there's all these ways I could sort this based on how bright the content is or how sharp it is or how good the AI thinks the image is. It has its own scoring system. A lot of ways we can look at this content let's just take a look at the results here. So we go down this list, we should see the results get of lower quality because it's sort of irrelevance. But I mean, there's hundreds of good results here. This is impressive. So that's a miss. I don't think that's a, a good one, but man, look how good this is. I keep going down here. Uh, okay, there's fog with no flowers. There's fog with no flowers. That's not great. Um, you know, keep going down here. Oh, here's a video. This is interesting. When you look at this little blue section here or here, this is saying that it thinks there's a match somewhere in this part of the video. This is a video where I'm editing an image with fog. It sees the fog and it returns that as a relevant result for this search, which is just crazy. And this is not in Lightroom. This is part of my watched folders. I have a separate structure of folders because I don't edit my videos in Lightroom. I edit it in other software. So I'm searching everything all at once and it's finding the relevant content. And if I don't want to look at videos, well, I can search for only photographs. And now it's just back to that. So let's say this is the image I want to work with. Well, obviously I want to go to Lightroom so I can edit it or print it or whatever. You just simply right click, choose open with Lightroom or even better, the shortcut command E. When you click this, it goes back to Lightroom. I'm in the wrong catalog. So it's closing Lightroom. It's reopening in the correct catalog, switching to the correct image. How impressive is that? With just typing in flowers and fog, we found the right image, which was in a different catalog than we were using, and it got right to it. If I look at my catalog structure, I in my recent catalogs, this is my normal catalog, but I have a bunch of personal stuff like family photos that I don't want to show in a YouTube video. So I've not granted access to this content to peek to. So it's not showing me this content, but I have access to the content that I have on my internal laptop drive for landscape images as well as on an external drive, which is not currently connected. So it's actually able to search offline content, find good results, and even point to the smart previews in Lightroom that I can work with, even though that drive is not currently connected. Very, very powerful. Let's go back to peak two. Let's approach this in a slightly different way. Let's go and change our search term. Instead of flowers and fog, let's go look for yellow flowers this time. That's pretty good. I do see 153 images. Maybe I want to narrow that down. Let's go search for only ones that I've given some star ratings, like at least two stars. Great. I got some good images of yellow flowers. If I want to work on this one, I click on it, hit Command E, go straight to that image in Lightroom. Very quick, very easy to find the content you want. Coming back here, let's look at how you get started, right? So obviously I've already set this up and I've been searching this content. When you open up peak to, you're going to see something that's just going to be kind of blank. And I'm just going to kind of close all these side panels. So this would probably just be like a big gray area when you first work with peak to. 
what you need to do is enable the sources you want to use. So you go to the top left here for the sources tab. And here you can see the sources I've added. So I have a couple of Lightroom catalogs and a separate watch folder of my video tutorials and related assets like notes for my course. So when I've made my recent course, I have all these course notes people can reference and I can search that content too. So this is all here, whether it's Lightroom or not. And if I want to add other sources, I just go click on the plus and then pick the sources I want to add. So yeah, it can be Lightroom or Apple Photos or On One, Pixelmator, Final Cut Pro, Premiere, iMovie. If you use software like DaVinci, it's not currently listed, although the Peak 2 support team tells me that's coming soon. You can just go click on the folder icon and point to any image, video, or PDF on your drive you want to search and add that and it'll grab that whole folder structure and let you search it. So super easy. Just tell it what you want. And then once you've ingested that content, you just search through the top. So if we want to go search for say waterfalls, I would go to content, which means look at the pixels of the image and then go search for the thing I'm going to tell. It's going to say waterfall hit enter and great. Here are all my waterfall images to find that content. But there's other ways we could search here. We could, for example, search for speech, meaning video content. It'll look at the transcript that it generates of the video. Let's try that. I'm going to go switch over to speech. Let's go look for Lemenzia. And I need to go switch to allow videos to show. Great. Here are videos where I said the word Lemenzia. So this, for example, is my latest course that I just launched this week. And in this video, Let's go see what it found here. If I go switch to the single content view, so we're in the grid view now showing all the thumbnails. I want to switch to the single content view. It shows the video, but then the transcript. This is a transcript it generated by detecting I was speaking English and writing out the English language transcript. It'll support multiple languages. And here it sees the first match on the word Lumenzia is at one minute and 38 seconds. It's not even a word in the dictionary. It understood I said Lumenzia. Check this out. I hit play. And we're going to use Google Lumenzia to help do that. So let's try. You can see all the results here. If I go down here. And for lights, we click on L Lumenzia. It just it absolutely blows my mind that it can find all this content related to Lumenzia. As I said it in a video where I never transcribed the video, it just knows. It's incredible. So coming back here, there are, uh, then there's a similarity. So similarity means give it an image and it will look for images like that image. So switching to the finder here, I've got an image of the Aurora. Let's drag this in, drop it, and it's now going to search for Aurora images. And so, yeah, it's found the exact same image it processed. That makes sense. You'd hope that it would do that. But go down the list here. Look at this. It's found other Auroras and it's a totally different image that it's found. Here's another Aurora. Here's a different Aurora. It's finding it's, now it's finding, okay, a little bit less relevant because I'm still sorting my relevance as Milky Way. It's finding other night shots that feel like that thematically. Let's go down this list. Very, very impressive to do this kind of a search, not just on an exact match of the image, but things which are conceptually like that image. Let's go to that. The next one would be metadata. This would be one where we could search for things like your lens data or uh, even more complex things I'll show you in a minute. Let's go in here. Let's hit 100 meaning I can search for things like one one hundredth of a second. I've got 1,791 images that would match that or ISO 100. So my low ISO images, let's use that. Great. Now I have like lower noise images sorted here in my metadata, but I can get fancier than that. This metadata is not just things like the EXIF metadata. It's also the metadata that is generated by peak to things it sees in your content. So let's go click on, like, for example, I don't even know how it's going to view this. This is pretty abstract. Go to the top right inspector. And here you can see, for example, this image, I had given it two stars over in Lightroom. I had put my name as the content author, no keywords, basic metadata, right? EXIF is where you'd see things like the lens and camera data. AI, this is where Peak2 is analyzing your image. So this is not something that's in Lightroom. It is instead saying, hey, what, is, what are the aesthetic qualities of your image? Is this a good or bad image? And gives it a score from zero to one. Or on its technical merits, it's categorizing it as abstract architecture with no people. It sees it as low saturation, very bright, not very colorful. 
It's even looking for color harmonies, which I think is kind of a stretch here for a pretty monochromatic image, but it will analyze the color in your image. And we can use all this data to not only look and see how the AI sees it, we can use it to sort the results. So for example, maybe just image which is brighter, or we can filter to these things. So let's say we wanna search for split complementary color themes. So let's go back up to our search here for metadata, and I'm gonna start typing in complementary, and we'll go for a single split complementary. So here are all the images where if I click on this image, it's, you know, it's orange and teal, and it sees that mix of colors in the image as a single split complementary image. And so, I mean, it's just endlessly powerful as it analyzes these images for you to search on this. Now, I don't want to overplay the AI. I think it's pretty good, although in a number of cases, I would argue with it a little bit. So I think this is one of the areas that I'd love to see some further improvements in Peak 2 in terms of the overall quality of the scoring. The categorization is pretty good, but it's, it's amazing that it's an option. It is helpful, and I'm sure it's only going to get better. The team behind Peak 2 has been just amazing with support. So I feel really good about where this tool is going to be going in the years to come. Next up, let's close that. We look at the file info. So here we could look for things like the file name or the extension. And then if we want to go beyond these parameters, there's even more. Let's kind of close this, open up our search terms a bit. These little icons here are other search terms. So I could search, for example, based on the specific source, like just my external drive. I could go look at the hierarchy, things like your smart collections. We could filter by certain years. We can look at keywords, which could be keywords that I've added. So I could find images that I've you know, tagged as Boeing, for example. You know, these are my keywords or the AI keywords, things that it sees. So, you know, um, I don't know. Do I have any dog images? Maybe. I, I'm not sure I do. I'm not sure why I'd pull this up. So that's a example of a poor result here. And yeah, none of these are good. So, yeah, but there's dogs. Uh, it's sorted by the original date, not relevance. Let's try relevance. So for whatever reason, it's not taking that right now, but it did find dogs in here. And if I could have sorted by relevance, I'll have to report that bug that the team, like I said, behind Peak2, they've been amazing about responding to requests for support or bugs, whatever. So I'm sure this will get fixed quickly. Uh, just absolutely super powerful. We could search for people. So it'll find people it understands in the images. You know, this is one interface to that. Another is at the bottom. So aside from the searches here, let's go close this up. Down below, there's a people view, and this is interesting. So it's found these people. There's not many because I'm not using, you know, family photos and that kind of stuff, but it's found me. It's found a stock image I use for WebShop Pro. It's found a statue and part of a building. We could name these, go find these images. If I want to go find, you know, where is my image, I just click on this. It's going to jump right to images of me, and I could open these up in the catalog. So we'll click on this, Command E, boom, jump right to it, go export that image. So as you can see, there's just sort of an endless array of different ways you can search the content in Peak 2 with the various options here. But maybe you don't want to just always search on the fly. Maybe you want to save a few of your favorite search terms, and you can do that too. On the left here, besides the Sources tab, the other tab I use a lot is Albums. And Albums are where you can save basically what they call Smart Album. If we go create a new Smart Album, you can give it characteristics to search for and you can create your own saved search results. So for example, I already created ones looking for arches. So I can click on this and it's going to pull up images with an arch. And if I want to further refine it, I can combine by saying like, let's just go find the better arches where I've starred them, at least two stars. Great. There we go. But you know, within these, if I double click on this, I can go and edit what I've already done. And you see, here's the name I give it in the list. I'm searching for the same word as arch. And it's looking in the workspace is just all sorts of, so not a very complex search. It's like as if I had just typed arch up above, but we can get fancier. Let's go look at, for example, one star waterfalls. In here, it's looking for waterfalls, but also those that have a rating greater than or equal to one. If you go to the most frequently used, I got my rating, and you can just keep adding more options here. I have it set to kind of an and condition, meaning match all of the following, but we could match any for a more expansive or condition. So you can get quite fancy with how you search for these things as a save search, 
and then at any time pull it up and find this content. I can go and find, you know, images that I have with stars in them, you know, sand dunes with flowers. I think I might have shown this. Really, really powerful. But you could also use it to do things like find bad images. I can search for images which are simply too bright and should probably be removed. These are like overexposed. So for the search terms here, I have a few different things. I'm looking at image analysis, which is the AI. So I go into image analysis, went down to brightness level. And then I said is greater than this 235. So I'm finding brighter images. And I said with a rating less than one star, meaning unrated images. If I give it a star, then I don't want to see it here. So I'm just finding bright images with no stars in this result. Or I could use fully the AI. If you go to this low AI score here, it's using its analysis of the technical and aesthetic score and finding images which have relatively lower scores and surfacing those results here. Many of these I'm seeing are showing up where they're like bracketed, so they don't look great. They're too dark, they're too bright. That makes sense. It doesn't understand what I was trying to do there. Or I've got a panorama where the image is split. So I don't know if that's something that Peak 2 could ever understand, but I'd love for it to understand the concept of you know panoramas, these related images, to maybe ignore that where it's truly um, an aesthetically bad image versus part of a sequence around it. But I mean, it is returning like lower quality results here as I asked for based on its searches. I could go, for example, find black and white images here. You know, if I look in this, I did kind of hack this a little bit looking for high brightness with low colorfulness. Uh, and I excluded my PDFs because they're mostly white. So you know, as you can see, there's just endless array of options here for how you search, saving your searches. I think this tool is just so impressive. I've got a bunch more information in the tutorial I've linked below as well as information on which version of Peak 2 you should get. Now for more Lightroom tutorials, click to this next video.